Good evening, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I also want to give all praises to the Earthly Mother, the Holy Spirit. I pray that they all bless this lesson today. We're going to be getting into some uh, deep conversations, some deep topics today. So I hope you guys have your Bibles ready. I'm going to get into this because we're in some really, really serious times now. And uh, the Spirit's been on me heavy the last few days to kind of get some things put together. I think we have a really good lesson that actually be really eye-opening to a lot of uh, the brothers and sisters that are uh, eagerly waiting and patiently waiting for the Most High um, to send His Son in return and to restore His people. Um, what I want to do is, first things is first, is I want to talk about uh, atonement. Um, my brother, uh, Yai Kwaban Yisrael, made a good video today talking about uh, atonement being this Saturday into Sunday. I know a lot of us do it at different times. You know, we're all trying to do the righteous acts as best we can. I'm not going to make this a topic about, oh, well, it's this day or it's this day. I'm just letting you know that me and my family and a lot of other brethren that I, I, I fellowship with are going to be doing atonement uh, tomorrow evening uh, to Sunday evening. So I'm just letting you guys know what we're doing. I mean, you guys feel do what you feel the spirit leads you to do, but I just wanted to let you guys know that because, uh, like I said, this is a really big weekend, and I wanted to, you know, let my let you guys know about my brother who put that video out today um, about atonement and when he's going to be uh, observing it, and um, our family's going to be doing the same thing. Okay, now um, before we get into the scriptures today, I want to kind of talk about a lot of these things that are going on. You know, when you come into the truth, a lot of times, a lot of brethren are so focused on the scriptures that they lose the fact that the most high is in absolutely everything. You know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, you say something about the earthly mother. That's wrong. Give me chapter and verse. Give me chapter and verse. Give me chapter and verse. Everything that you guys uh, have been exposed to, you have not been exposed to every single thing in the 66 or 80 books of the Bible. Do you, do you really think that Moses was the first person that wrote? Cause Moses wrote the Torah, the first five books. You don't think anyone else wrote before him. You don't think that Abraham, the most high made the covenant with Abraham and he didn't write anything. You don't think that Enoch who the most high actually just took him away. And he, the most high, he walked with Enoch and he, and he showed Enoch everything. You don't think Enoch wrote anything. Adam, who was blessed and who named all the animals and named everything here. You don't think he wrote down anything? His son, Seth, you don't think he wrote anything? There are so many other scriptures uh, that have been hidden that a lot of people have not been exposed to. So if I'm going to give you chapter and verse of certain things that I read, well, if you haven't read them, then it wouldn't make any sense to you anyways. So that's why a lot of times I don't really even get into that because that's not that's not what I'm here for. You know, I, I might expose you and tell you about certain things that I read or I'll tell you where I get it from. And if it and if the spirit is on you, you will search it out. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're called to do is we're called to search. If the uh, kings will search a matter out, you know, and if that means I need to start looking, you know, you need to start looking at different books. You need to start searching out certain certain stories. So be it. That's what uh, I was led to do. And so I'll, I'll, and um, I, I suggest that if that's what's on you, you do the same. OK, but there are a lot of other books and a lot of other um, information that, you know, first of all, is not for everyone. That's one thing that we've kind of gotten away from that people seem to think that just everyone had an equal access to the scriptures. And that was not true. So what I want to talk to you, I want to show you guys something. Is that, and that's the thing is with, with Gentiles is the, the a lot of the, the, the early apostles didn't want Gentiles to have our scriptures because they knew that once they got a hold of them, they were going to twist everything. Okay. And we all know who the scriptures were given to. Okay. And let's, let's read that real quick. Okay. Let's go to Psalms. Get it here real quick. Uh, Psalms chapter 147. Verses 19 and 20. Let's get this real quick. Um, he showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. 
So all the scriptures were only given to the Hebrews in the first place. The Holy Spirit was given to the Hebrews as well. And she's the one at this point who guides us into understanding of the scriptures. Okay. So not anyone, not everyone is, can just pick up the Bible, pick up the scriptures and just break them down. That, that's, that's not how it is. That's why throughout the scriptures about the end times, it always talks about how the Gentiles, you know, did not understand the scriptures. They tried to break them down and they came up with all these different vain philosophies and vain, vain thinkings. Okay. And it talks about that all throughout the scriptures in Jeremiah and wisdom of Solomon, how, the, how they didn't understand. They didn't know how they didn't have the truth. They didn't have understanding. Okay. And to this day, they still don't have understanding. They're still trying to make the Bible a universal book, which it is not. But let me show you something that probably a lot of you guys haven't seen before. This uh, writing comes from the letter. Let's see, what's this going to call it here? This is called the letter of Peter to James and its reception. Okay. What I want you to take a look here is I want to take a look here uh, at verse uh, two, Jer. Verse two, right here. Okay, well, let's read one answer so we get to complete understanding of what's going on. Peter to James, the Lord and Bishop of the Holy Church. Peace be with you always from the Father and all through Hamashak Yahweh Knowing well that you, my brother, eagerly take pains about what is for the mutual benefit of us all. I earnestly beseech you not to pass on to any one of the Gentiles the books of my preachings which I hear forward to you, nor to any one of our own tribe before probation. So, okay. So as you can see, first of all, he didn't even want the Gentiles to get the books at all, but even within our own nation, they had to even our own people had to go through a certain probation in order to even get the, get the scriptures, you see. But when you go to, you know, the Gentiles, when they got their, their hands on the books, they just passed them out to everybody. So then everyone can then just make up whatever stories they want to make up, which is exactly what's happened today. Okay, now let's take a look at this. This is what's happened right here. This has happened um, with Peter's scriptures, but I mean, it's really happened a lot with Paul's scriptures. Okay, because it's just, it's, it's, it's amazing how people just, they, they, they take it, and they just twist it, take it and twist it, take it and twist it all the time. But check this part out right here. Tell me this is not what's happening already today or has been happening. Okay. This, he said, that everything might come to pass. But those persons who, I know not how, allege that they are at home in my thoughts, wish to expound the words which they have heard of me better than I myself who spoke them. To those whom they instruct, they say that this is my opinion, to which indeed I never gave a thought. But if they falsely assert such a thing, hold on here. Oops, hold on. If they falsely assert such a thing while I am still alive, how much more after my death will those who come later venture to do so? Okay, that's exactly what's happened right there. Okay, they've taken Paul's letters. Well, first of all, you know, like I showed you guys in other videos, how there's all those precepts in uh, the Apocrypha and how Paul was referring to when he says talking about the uh, circumcision or circumcision, he was talking about two different groups of Hebrews. Well, they, they hit, you know, the Gentiles hit all that information. So then they can just come up with their own interpretations. Okay. They take out the precepts, then they take out the books. After they take all that stuff out, then they they uh, elevate themselves into a moral posi higher position by saying they have a PhD and they have this and they have that, and then uh, they they you know act like they are the ones who can break down the scriptures, okay? Like they have some moral high ground, okay? Now, as you can tell here, you know our own forefathers didn't even want them to even have the scriptures, and there was a, there was a process even for our own people before they were even given access to the scriptures. Okay, so this, these two uh, parts right here link up there with that Psalms 147, 19 and 20 about how the words were given only to our, our people. That's it. And that's how it is, you know. And the thing is, is that like my daughter, I was going to share a little story. She was telling me my daughter's a, a freshman in college. And yesterday they had some kind of a little forum. They were reading us some book about slavery. And um some kids said that, you know, our people went into slavery because they're ignorant. 
well, you know, my daughter's kind of listening to a lot of this stuff. So she ended up, uh, she, she pretty much had it at that point. And I know a lot of these people's opinions. So she started using the scriptures and started breaking it down. And she started reading, she read Deuteronomy 28 and 68, read it, broke it down. And the, some of the, a lot of the students were there like, oh my gosh, it says that? What verse is that? What is that? Well, some of the, you know, the, the, the instructors there who are professors, of course, so one of them had a, has a PhD and um, they were talking there. They started giving their own opinion about how God loves everybody. And my daughter said, well, nope. Uh, show me what scripture that says, says that, you know, as she goes, I'll show you Acts 5 and 30. When she broke that down to her and, you know, it, it, it went a little back and forth, but pretty much my daughter was just using scriptures to pretty much validate everything she said. And every time the uh, professor would come up with something, my daughter would pretty much shut that down. Now, the thing is, is that like, this is what, but she ended up saying that my daughter, you know, had an evil spirit on her and that she needs to be careful how she was uh, using the scriptures. That shows you what we're dealing with right here. You know, they, they said that they said the same thing to Mashiach Ahawashai when he was here, that he had a demon and, and everything else. But that's that's how it is. They seem to think that, you know, there's many ways of interpreting the Bible, of course. But if someone comes with a different interpretation than they do, then, of course, they have a evil spirit or they don't know what they're talking about. But that's what the society has done. It's elevated them. They've elevated themselves to authority. And if anyone comes against what they say, you know, they are wrong. They have an evil spirit or, or something of that. I mean, we've all had to deal with that. We've all heard that kind of garbage before, you know, and it's like, hey, that's OK, because like I told my daughter, and I could tell other people when my kids, um, they, they go to battle. They defend the faith all the time, you know, when presented the opportunity. And a lot of these people that are seeing this, you know, it's like, hey, um, you might not be necessarily getting it to get understanding. A lot of times they're getting it just to get marked because when the most high starts to bring judgment, which he's about to, a lot of people aren't going to have an excuse. Okay. But I'm, you know, but the thing is, is that I'm sure that that instructor never heard the Bible broken down like that. And she probably never, you know, expected to hear that from an 18 year old, you know, who's breaking down scriptures that she's probably never even heard of before. Um, and the thing is, is that that's how, that just shows you the times that we're in. The most high is elevating children above other people elevating young, uh, you know, our young people, you know, into, into higher positions of authority because, you know, they've been blessed with knowledge, understanding from the Holy Spirit. You know, the only way you're going to get this understanding is through the Holy Spirit. She'll be sent to you and she will increase your knowledge and understanding above, above others, you know? So that's just like a little story I wanted to kind of share with you guys, because I said, there's a lot of these things that are going on. That's, uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. We're going to get into a lot of scripture in a little bit. But um, one other thing I wanted to talk about, like I told you before, how the Most High uh, moves around and he, he manipulates all situations. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on with uh, this uh, Colin Kaepernick and the kneeling and everything else. The Most High is actually in that as well, because he's, he's in everything. That's why I tell you about, I was talking earlier about how um, the Most High is in all situations. He's even in this one. Let me, let, me, let me share with you guys how this is kind of playing out. Uh, over a year ago, Colin Kaepernick took a knee, but he took a knee because he was trying to highlight the plight of the Hebrews, which is what the Most High has been telling people to. He's been warning people. Hey, instead of like saying, let my people go, he's like, hey, acknowledge what has happened to my people. Okay. That's what um, Colin Kaepernick was trying to do. You know, just acknowledge, hey, the, my, my people have been treated like garbage. You know, they're not being treated equally. They're being shot down in the streets every day. No one's, you know, saying that uh, they need um, justice and they just blow everything off. Okay. That's like the most high saying, hey, acknowledge who my people are. Acknowledge what's happened to them. Acknowledge them. Acknowledge what's going on. Okay. But of course, this place doesn't acknowledge that they concentrate on the flag and the disrespect of the flag. Okay. That's what this place does. They're not acknowledging the plight of the Hebrews and they never do. Okay. Now, do you find it interesting that on last Friday night, which was at the evening when Donald Trump was actually talking about calling the, um, the other uh, players, uh, son, sons of bees or whatever else, that that was of course the start of the 23rd, nine twenty three. Okay, it started, of course, the evening of the 22nd, but that's technically 923, seven days before atonement. 
And the people, instead of acknowledging again, you know, the Most High has given you the last seven days to acknowledge, okay, his people and their plight. Now, would you understand what's happening 33 days before the uh, Revelation 12 sign? What was going on? You had hurricanes. You have earthquakes. You have devastating hurricanes. You have all these signs that the Most High is giving the whole world for those 33 days. And people are like, man, this is kind of crazy. All these things are happening. So he gave 33 days of just sign after sign after sign after sign. Then we got to the 923 where we had the alignment. Okay. So Trump says, calls them SOBs, and everyone, you know, gets all upset. So if you find that uh, interesting, that that's, you know, seven days before this 40-day grace period. W instead of acknowledging, again, acknowledging the plight of the Hebrews, they switched the entire message to unity and coming together. The Most High is not about unity and coming together. And we're going to get into some scriptures on this in a little bit. You know, the Most High is not trying to get everyone together on their own plan. See, the world wants to come into unity on their own terms, on their own plan. Never did they acknowledge the Most High, that he's upset. Never do they acknowledge the people, you know, his people that they have been treated so horribly for the last few thousand years. They never acknowledge that. They acknowledge uh, they, they, they want unity. They want everyone to come together as one. And the Most High is not down with that. And we're going to get into that shortly. But that's what's happened is the Gentiles have hijacked the message. So the Most High first gave you 33 days of signs. And the people did not, you know, fall on their faces to the Most High. Okay. He, he, he asked, you know, to you to acknowledge his, his people, acknowledge the plight of his people. The, the whole world has said, nope, not to that either as well the last seven days he again gave uh, the world an opportunity to acknowledge his people and their plight and the whole message is turned around instead of that to unity so now we're coming up to the 40th day and there's something interesting that happened um when this uh, sign happened where the eclipse went over africa uh 40 days after that judgment fell on us the hebrews and we went into slavery so we had, now this time we had uh, the eclipse go over the United States, and now we're waiting up to that 40th day. Now, what the Most High plans on doing after that 40th day, that's on him. But understand that judgment is now set, and it is going to start to fall. He gave, he gave the world a little, uh, you know, a little bit of a, uh, you know, a little bit of the judgment for the first 33 days. It's kind of been in a holding pattern these last seven days. But now the 40th day is just about here, and then all bets are off. This, this, the Revelation sign is, is a pat, calm and gone already, okay? So that 7,000 years shows that the time of the Gentiles is over with, the time of the Hebrews is to come. And um, he, gave, he gave everyone an opportunity to uh, acknowledge who his people are, acknowledge the, pite, the plight of them, to be able to repent, and the world has chosen not to do that, Okay. They want to break down the scriptures however they want to break them down, you know, and, and say that the whole book is about unity. The whole book is about everyone. And as you can tell here, I took, I gave you, you know, the scripture, one, uh, Psalm 147, 19 and 20. And I showed you right here how they didn't even want the uh, scripture shared with the other nations. And how right here it talks about what they, exactly what they've done is, you know, they, they, they try to tell you what, well, Paul didn't, he might have said this, but he really meant that. Peter might have said this, but he really meant that. And if they were doing that while they were alive. So you imagine what's going to happen after they, after they die. And that's exactly what's happened. They elevate themselves into positions of authority. They take books out. They hide books. They hide information. And that's what's exactly what has happened. Okay? Now, what I want to do is I want to show you guys how, you know, a lot of these things have changed. Um, and actually, there's a lot of spiritual stuff that's going on here. You know? And then I'm going to show you here. Um, this is actually out of the Nag Hammadi. This is called, this book is actually the uh, Revelation of Peter. Okay, this is the Revelation of Peter out of the Nag Hammadi. I'm gonna read a little bit from right over here. Okay, and this is what they've been doing to us. I wanna show you guys something because you're gonna start to see how all of these scriptures have played out perfectly. 
in this world today. These people oppress their brothers and say to them, through this fellowship, our God has mercy, since salvation comes to us alone through this. They do not know the punishment of those who rejoice at what was done to the little ones, those who watched when the little ones were taken captive. And there are others among those outside our number who call themselves bishops and deacons, as if they have received authority from God, but they bow before the judgments of the leaders. These people are dry canals. So as you can see here, you got people outside, you know, and there are others among those outside our number who call themselves bishops and deacons. That's what you get today. You got these other nations, these Gentiles calling themselves, elevating themselves, okay? As if they have received authority from God, but they bow before the judgment of the leaders. These people are dry canals. These people do not have authority, okay? They do not have authority to tell us anything. They do not have authority over the scriptures to try to break them down and tell you what stuff is really going on. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit more here. Right here. The little ones eventually will reign. I don't know if I got the whole copy, but I'll read it to you guys. I said, I am afraid because of what you have told me. Although there are only a few phonies among us, there are many others who lead astray and subdue multitudes of living ones. And when they speak your name, people will believe them. So a lot of people have, you know, a lot of other people have come and deceived many people, us living ones the Hebrews, okay? The Savior replied, for a specified time proportionate to their error, they will rule over the little ones. And after the completion of error, the being of immortal understanding, who does not grow old, will become new. And the little ones will rule over their rulers. That being, um, that being will pull out their error by its root and put it to shame and expose it for all the liberties it has taken. Peter, such people will never change, okay? And that's what's ha that's kind of things is what's happening, like with my daughter talking to that professor, you know, when that's that's a, an example of that, okay? When um, their error is being pulled out by their roots, I go, that being will pull out their error by its roots. You know, they use us to actually break down the scriptures and give you the true understanding of what is going on, okay? They're showing, our, our, our people now are showing the other nations that, this book, the Bible that they call it, um, is not a universal book. That has been the error that the um, the other nations have tried to use, make this book into as a, a universal book that is for everyone, when it is not. It is a book about the Hebrews. It's for the Hebrews by the Hebrews. And they're the only ones who can break it down. So, and that's what this is talking about right here. You got a lot of other nations who have taken this, these our books and act like they're theirs, and they're not. Okay, and now what you're starting to see is that our people are now ra are, are being raised back up by the Most High to give you to give the true knowledge and understanding of what what these scriptures really mean. And you know, I've been blessed with the opportunity to be able to link up with other books um, and 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 bring the puzzle together in, in even a little more clearly. But that's all praises to the Most High that um, He's chosen me to be able to do that. And then they send me the Holy Spirit, which has blessed me with a lot of understanding. And I, I all praises to them. I am nothing without them. They're the ones that have blessed me to be able to do this. And I thank the Most High that I'm able to do this for our people. Okay. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to read another one here. This one's another good one right here. This is the same thing. This is still also the revelation of Peter. This is a really good book. As you can tell, I have like a lot of... Uh, uh, things highlighted and underlined and notes and things like that as well. It's talking about uh, some church leaders lack knowledge and lead people astray. I'm going to read right here. For every authority, principality, and power of the ages wants to be with the immortal souls in the created world in order that these powers who do not come from what exists and have forgotten who they are may be glorified by, by the immortal souls that do exist. The powers have not been saved or shown the way by them though they always have wished to become imperishable. For if a mortal soul is empowered by a spirit of thought, at once it is joined by one of those who were led astray. Many others who oppose truth and are messengers of error will ordain their error and their law against my pure thoughts, since they see from one perspective only, and they think that good and evil come from the same source. They do business in my word, and they establish harsh fate 
in which the generation of immortal souls will run in vain until my return. For the immortal souls will surely remain among them, and I have forgiven their trans the transgressions into which they have fallen through their adversaries, and I have redeemed them from their slavery to give them freedom. So as you can tell, this is what it's telling you right now. And I have forgiven the transgressions into which they have fallen through their adversaries. So he's going to forgive the transgressions of the Hebrews that they have fallen you know, into because of their adversaries. And I have redeemed them from their slavery to give them freedom. Okay. As you can see, like I said, it's not talking about Jesus came and, and died so everyone can get salvation. That's not what it's talking about. It's showing you who this, uh, who, who he came and who, who he's talking about right here. Okay. That's what it's talking about right here. Cause we were going to be led into all these different thoughts and, and, and things like that. And that's what he's coming back for. He's come back to save us because of all the things that we've been, you know, we've been led to all these different religions, all these different philosophies. And that's what he's coming to take care of. Okay. And he's upset. Okay. But if you look up here again, this is what's going on right here for every, um, Authority, principality, and power of ages wants to be with the immortal souls in the created world. That's now it's here. In order that these powers who do not come from what exists and have forgotten who they are may be glorified by the immortal souls that do exist. This is exa now this is ex what you're seeing with this whole unity movement. See, they always want us to worship them, okay, their way. They want us to worship their way. They want us to worship their gods their way. They want us to actually follow the all of their traditions their way. That's why it's, it can never be like you guys can go do your thing and we'll do our thing. No, that's why they when they brought us here, they took away our language. They took away our names. They took away our belief system and made us, you know, gave us their names, gave us their tongue, and gave us their religion because they want us to worship them. And that's what this is talking about right here. If you look at it right here, that's exactly what it explains why they did that. For every authority, principality, and power of ages wants to be with the immortal souls in the created world. So they want us to be with them. They want the Hebrews with them. In order that these powers who do not come from what exists, so they have a different origination where they come from, and have forgotten who they are, may be glorified by the immortal souls that do exist. That's why it's so important for them to not let us go to our power but to continue to follow their way. See, that's why they cannot acknowledge the plight that they put us in. That's why instead of talking about when Kaepernick was talking about the things that happened to our people and acknowledging trying to fix it, they're not, they're not concerned with that. They're just concerned with, us, concerned with us shutting up and following their ways and worshiping the way they want us to. See how this all works? See how this all fits in together? Okay, see how this works? You know, the powers have not been saved or shown the way by them, though they always have wished to become imperishable. Okay. This is why when you see things like, uh, let me get the uh, wisdom of Solomon real quick. If I can find it. Let me see if I can find it here. Wisdom of Solomon chapter, let me get chapter five. So it gives you little hints in other, in other books. But when you can put it all together, um, wisdom is all in chapter five. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. You guys see that right there? Made no account. They will not acknowledge what we've gone through. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness, strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they uh, looked for. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness, his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of God and his lot is among the saints. Therefore have we erred uh, from the way of truth and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us and the son of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Okay, hold on real quick. Okay, so as you see, them taking our scriptures, them trying to break it down, them want us to, uh, to go their way, want us to worship their way, that's what this is talking about right here. 
So now you get a deeper understanding. This is this is what's going on in here in the spirit world too. For every authority, principality, and power of the ages wants to be with the immortal souls in the created world in order that these powers who do not come from what exists and have forgotten who they are may be glorified by the immortal souls that do exist. These powers have not been saved or shown the way by them. Okay? Through, uh, though they always have wished to become imperishable. So they've always wanted to be us. So therefore, you know, dumb us down and try to get us to continue with them. Instead of, you know, acknowledging our plight, they don't do that. They want us to be unified, but still worship the way they want us to worship. You see how this is all working out? It's very, very consistent. Okay. But now we're going to be getting into, you know, as you can tell now, the times that we are in we're going to get into a uh, second Ezra chapter nine Let's see if i can find it for you okay Ezra chapter nine and there's a lot going on here second Ezra chapter nine all right because uh hold on that's 10 wrong one here we go all right chapter nine there's a lot of things going on right now. Uh, this is talking about the end, the end times and how, you know, the most high, we already know that he's not about coming together. You know, you go to Revelations 18 and talk about come out of her, my people. Okay. You know, gather, gather yourself together, you know, oh, nation not desired. He's, he's not down with coming together, not under this format. He's down with his people coming together under the most high's plan. Not us coming together all together as one throughout the world and uh, following in the wickedness of this world. That's not what he's into. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get into a uh, second Ezra chapter nine. We're going to break this down here a little bit and kind of show you about what's going on here with the 33 days uh, for September 23rd. And then eventually the whole 40 days uh, of uh, grace period before destruction comes. Okay, and as you can see here, I'm using my old Bible here. It's actually, if you want to read some yourself, you can check out some of these precepts that are actually here as well on the side. I'll try to take some pictures of you guys and take that out. Also, we're going to be getting into all the different precepts, but we're going to get into a couple of them. All right, here we go. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is, the, it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Check this out. Okay. Um, let's link this up to Luke chapter 21, verse 24. We're going to start at 24. Okay. This, is, this, this, this matches up perfectly. It's, it's amazing. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led, led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay? Now, here's the signs it's kind of talking about. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. There's your signs right there. That's talking about when, right here at the start when it says he answered me and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is a very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. This is showing you right here that he's about to visit the world that he made. And these are the signs to look for the signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring that was happening the first 33 days. Okay. After the uh, eclipse, you got the eclipse, you had 33 days. You had all these, the rays roaring. You had all these, uh, hurricanes, you have all these earthquakes, you have these volcanoes getting ready to erupt, interrupt. you have uh, almost a nuclear war on the, uh, you know, sitting there any day, waiting to happen any day with North Korea. Okay. And you got men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So you're starting to see people now 
you know, they're starting to see, yeah, this is, this is not normal. Look at all these things that are happening. Okay. So that was that whole first 33 days. Then the last seven days you had, you know, Trump said what he said, and, and then the whole country coming back into, well, we don't want to, we're not going to acknowledge the most high and what he wants. We're going to talk about unity, just like the tower of Babel. We're going to, we're going to unify our people and bring everybody together as one still not acknowledging the plight of his people. See that? And then, you, and then it says, uh, if you go here, then the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So if you keep on reading, um, 27, and then shall they see the, come, the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. So this could be, this could be after the seven days. It's now 40 days. Now you're talking about the most high coming with power and great glory. But because, of course, um, you got that Revelation 12 sign. You got the archangel Michael getting ready to stand up for Mars and war and getting ready to uh, call his people home. And actually, you're going to continue when we continue to read the second address, you're going to see even more of this coming on. Let's continue reading uh, second address. Hold on, quick. Let me get something to drink here. Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll start with three. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So as you guys start seeing these signs, he's, you're going to remember this is what the Most High has already said was going to happen. Okay. Let's see. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So you're starting to see the effects and you guys starting to see all the signs that are coming on the earth, showing you that this is the end. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby he have, uh, he have believed shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. So you see that right there? See, let me read that to eight again. That's really huge. Shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. A certain group of people have been sanctified from the beginning. They will see. They will be removed to their land, to their borders, and he will protect them there. That goes back with uh, the video I made a while ago about the removal of the righteous. Okay, and that's I've talked about right here. Then people getting removed and being protected. You know, if you want a little more information, you can watch the video on the removal of the righteous. It talks about the angels coming and, and getting uh, the people who were marked and then removing them, and then uh, a couple of the other angels being lights and and leading people back to Jerusalem. See that right there? All right, that's that's huge right there. Okay, let's continue with nine. Then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Now you see that right there? Talking about how the people who, who uh, that's about the other nations, then shall they be in a pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, Okay, so they've abused the ways of the Most High. They didn't keep the laws, okay? Statutes and commandments that the Most High wanted them to do. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. torments. Talking about how they treated us. Remember, they, you know, they, he, he gave them opportunity to acknowledge who we are, acknowledge the things that have been happening to us. Beg for forgiveness. They chose not to. They said they wanted it. They want everything on their terms. Now showing you that he's going to remove his people back to their land. And then those people who, the other nations who did not acknowledge who they were, who did not treat his people correctly, are going to be in a pitiful case. See how that works? All right. Now, what I want to do here is real quick, but I kind of kept on going. But let me read um, 1 Peter 1, uh, 5, and 9. Let me get that real quick. Let me get that real quick. It's amazing how all these things are, because now now is the time to actually get this understanding. 
First Peter chapter one, verse five, who are kept by, well, let's read it for, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Okay, verse five, who are kept by the power of the Most High through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You can say he has people that are already set for salvation, and they're going to be revealed in the last time, at the end days. Okay, let's read uh, verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Okay, so these people were already set up to be saved. Okay, and that's what this is talking about right here. Okay, and now you're getting into the, uh, the other nations right here, being in torments. For the things that they've done. Let's read that real quick. That's from Revelations uh, 14 and 11. Let me get that real quick. Revelation, Revelations 14, verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or uh, nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Okay, that was 11. And let's read 19 and 3 also. Revelations chapter 19, verse 3. And again, they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. Okay, let's go ahead and continue. Um, we're going to go with uh, 9 and we'll start with verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me, and they that have loathed my law while they ha had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. So when the Most High had Kaepernick talk and trying to bring uh, uh, people to actually understand what's happening to his people, and they just refused it. And then they just, they, you know, they just wanted to believe, they wanted to just make it about something totally different. As they had a chance to actually acknowledge who the people are, and then try to be do right by them and repent, they did not do that. Okay, so I showed you how the Most High works in all different aspects everywhere. Okay, and then they despised it. In the last seven days, they've been despising actually the plight of His people. Let's go to continue with twelve. The same must know it after death by pain, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So we're not supposed to be just concentrating on the other nations and how they're going to be punished. We need to be taking some self-inflection, taking some time to look in what is it that I need to be doing in order to be saved? How is it that the righteous are going to be saved? What is it that I'm supposed to be doing for the most high? Okay, that's what we need. And that's what I've actually kind of geared my, my ministry to, is self uh, you know, self-reflection. You know, and then how can I be used? Learning, increasing my knowledge and understanding, you know, instead of just constantly worrying about the other nations. I don't care. I mean, like everyone's like, Esau is the white man or Esau is the Arabs. I, I, I don't really care. I said, the Most High is going to, uh, you know, filter all that out because that's not real, I'm supposed to be concentrating on. It, it, you know, if you're not in the truth, if you don't have any knowledge and understanding, I don't care what color you are. You're not, you're not, you're not my brother at this point. I said, because the Most High said, talks about how, the people who do the will of the, of the Most High, that's his mother. That's his father. So that's why I concentrate on people who want to do the will of the Most High. I can't worry about if someone isn't getting it or whatever. Because I said, that's not my that that's not my call. That's the Most High's. So all I can do is study and try to share with whoever the Most High wants me to share with. And that's it. And, and anything else is, up, is, is the Most High's. Okay? Let's go ahead and continue. Um... Um, let's continue with 12. The same must know it um, after death by pain. And therefore, be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. Then answered I and said, I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. Like as a wave is greater than a drop. And he answered me saying, like as the field is, so is also the seed. As the flowers be, such are um, the colors also. Such as the workman is, such, as, uh, such also is the work. 
and is the husbandman is. You see, himself so is uh, his husbandry also, for it was the time of the world. Let me see if I get this one. Here we go. Okay, and now. When I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man uh, spake against me. For then everyone obeyed, but now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. So I considered the world and behold, there was peril because of the devices that were come into it. And I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain and let my grape be kept and my plant for which is great, which for with great labor have I made it perfect. Okay, hold on real quick. Okay, so as you can see, the Most High talks about how very few are going to be saved, how he has one grape out of the whole cluster. So he he tells that one grape to, you know, come out of her, my people, to separate, to be holy. To be holy means to be separate. Okay? So this whole unity movement is going against what the Most High is telling us to do. The Most High has told us to be separate, to follow him. But see, that's, but that's how this world is, you know? It, it, they, they, they're they going to come together but they're coming together against what the most high wants okay so you know in a quick recap like I said you can you can see the most high in every single situation if you look okay the scriptures were given to the Hebrews the Hebrews did not want the scriptures just given to everyone okay the Gentiles had their time they had their reign they took the scriptures they hid a lot of them. They, they, they've hidden a lot of books. They've hidden a lot of uh, breakdowns. They've hidden a lot of precepts. Okay. So that they can make up their entire, their, their own doctrine, you know, and our own forefathers told us they didn't, they didn't want the, they didn't want them to have the books, but that was the part, that was the, that was the way most high set everything up. And that's the way things had went down. They, um, we came to the 7,000, well, we had the eclipse, August 21st. We had 33 days till not, uh, September 23rd. We had a lot of uh, calamities happening over that time. Most High giving people fair warning about what's to come on the world. Most High has been trying to get people to acknowledge his people, acknowledge their plight in order to repent. And I have seen actually some Gentiles. Um, it's been really cool. I mean, you know, say, admitting, yes, I'm a Gentile. Yes, I know who you guys are. I know I want to help. I want to uh, learn. That's a beautiful thing. You know, I want to, if, if, if my lot is to be a servant in the kingdom, that's what I want to do. That's a beautiful thing to see people that are actually, you know, wanting to follow, wanting to get down with the most highs program and the most highs bless that person with that seed to be able to acknowledge that. That's a blessing right there. Just like it's a blessing for the Hebrews to be able to get knowledge and understanding of who they are and who their responsibility is. Same thing with the Gentiles. It's a blessing for them that the most highs given them the seed to be able to see who they are and what um, their place is going to be in the kingdom. That's a blessing, same as, as, as well, but that's the most high who's done that. Okay. And you use the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes and does that. Okay. So it's, it's, it's been a beautiful thing to see a lot of different people seeing what's going on in the world and wanting to be saved. And, and, and it's beautiful because the most high is showing them the path in order for them to get um, <clears throat> some sort of favor. Okay, and it's the people that he's already chosen. Okay, so we had up to the thirty-three, the thirty-third day. We had all these things happening. Then for the last week, it's been unity, unity, unity. But it's never about unifying under the Most High's plan. It's unifying under the world's plan. It's unifying under Satan's plan. Unifying with unity as long as Satan and his people are on top, making the making them <clears throat> making the, the decisions, and never acknowledging who his people are. Okay, but in Wisdom Psalm 5, it talks about how these people, these are the ones that we've been treating like garbage this whole time. That's what it's talking about right now. And, and then, you know, all these signs have been coming and, and showing themselves. And now we're coming up to the 40th day. We are in exciting times, brethren. Exciting times. Um, again, our family is going to be keeping atonement tomorrow evening. 
My brother Yaikwab uh, Bani Israel made a really good video. You might want to go check it out, go on his page and check it out. I'm kind of talking about atonement. I'm not sure when uh, you guys have done it. I'm just letting you guys know what we are doing. You know, if other people do it different times, and so be it. Just keep it. You know, keep it for the most high. Atone. Ask for forgiveness for our forefathers and for us as well. I said we're all going to need it. Okay? And, and to be looking for the most high to come and redeem his people, to take them home. If they've taken us back to the land, he's going to protect us there. Whatever it is that he has planned, I'm looking forward to it. Because whatever he has planned is is unfathomable compared to what we can think about. There's things we can dream about. But now we're coming on our, our blessing, brethren. And it's a beautiful thing that now the Most High is going to uh, manifest himself in front of the whole world and going to restore us to our rightful position. And that's just a blessing that the Most High has uh, has given us. And, um, you know, I pray that this uh, video has been enlightening to you. And uh, I pray that, um, you said, you, you guys, if it's in your heart to keep the, uh, keep the atonement, to go ahead and do that. And uh, let's uh, look, look for the Most High to start doing wonderful things for his people. I pray that you guys have a great evening. Shalom.